Hello everyone, welcome back to COM121. Today we're going to be going over your Adobe Illustrator project for this week. Um, so by this point you should have already drawn your uh, your own initials on a separate piece of paper at a minimum of 25 times and you should have a few or at least one specifically uh, that you really like. Uh, if you haven't found one that you really like you should be going back to the drawing board and continue flushing that out on paper uh, in a medium that's a lot faster and a lot easier to draw in. All right, so once you're ready to launch uh, Adobe uh, Illustrator, we're going to go ahead and launch it. This is gonna, what you're going to see first. Um, we're going to click New File, then we'll come over to Print, and we'll set the name of the project. I'm going to do B. Harris, and then I'm going to set the width to 3000. This is a standard that my wife uses over in Marcom, and we're going to set that to pixels. Awesome. And make sure that your raster effects is set to 300 ppi. That's a good resolution. Um, as far as Illustrator goes, something that's really cool about it is that uh, the things you make in it are infinitely scalable. So you can blow these up as big as you want and they'll never get pixelated. All right. So first thing we're going to want to do is get ourselves acquainted with interface, right? We have our tools on the left, other settings on the top, and uh, more quick access on the right. Um, again, and then we did this in the last one, we want to make sure that our workspace is set to the Essentials or the Essentials Classic. I have mine set to Essentials Classic if you'd like to follow or at least have your tools in the same orientation as my own. All right, first thing you want to do is you're going to click Brushes. Um, and if you click on Brushes and you start drawing, you're going to notice these brushes are kind of ugly. Um, so let's make our own. And the way you make your own is you'll come up over here on the right, you'll click Brushes, you'll click this little Sandwich button, and you click New Brushes. We'll leave the settings the same. Make sure that this is selected and these two are not. You'll click OK. And you can name your brush. I'm going to do the IH. And then you can change the angle and the roundness of your brush. I'm going to set the angle of mine to, let's go 60. And I'm going to set the roundness to 50. And I'm going to change the default size. We'll go 32. Yeah, we'll go 32. And the reason I'm making my own custom brush is because when it's angled like this, my strokes look more like a pen. Um, if it's perfectly round, they look kind of dumb and dull, like you're painting in Windows Paint. We don't want to do that. We want to make something that looks more stylized. Feel free to make your own brushes and get uh, more creative with it if you want. But for now, this is what we're going to use. All right, now bear with me here as I look at my reference picture and try and recreate what I've drawn earlier. Okay, get ready to watch me draw this like 30 times. That's not bad. That's great. I've recorded this video many times because I have to do this perfectly like first try to, to show you guys how it goes. Um, if you screw up, if you do something you don't like, you can always uh, hit Command-Z or Control-Z. That's what I'm doing here. I'm trying over and over and over again to draw something that I like and continually failing. Okay, that one's not bad. All right, let's draw the H now. A little too big on the swirl. Okay, that's not terrible. Try one. Let's try one more time. Okay, let's roll with that. Okay, so now that I've got the rough idea of what I'd like to do with my project, let's go ahead and do direct adjustments to this. And for this, we can use the curvature tool. The curvature tool allows us, if we zoom in here, you click on a path or you click on one of your brush strokes, you can see these little anchor points and they allow you to drag these around and make adjustments. So for instance, this B is rather square. I'm gonna click on the B, and then I have these anchor points that I can even delete if I want. I can go ahead and hit delete on that, and that'll go ahead and cause that to round. I think instead I'm going to slide this one down and this one down as well to get a, a more smooth curve to that. Let's get a little bit of a bolder B on the front of this. Pull this out its head.
zoom out to see how that looks. Drag this in a tad. You can add points too by clicking in free space. So um, if you wanted to add a point, you can always do that. And then this tail is a little bit long, so let's let's adjust that as well. Let's move this, remove that point, and we'll bring this back like so. Okay, that's better. Let's adjust this. Oop, let's adjust this H now, and move this anchor point in line with that. For something that looks fluid enough. Don't think going all the way is the right choice here. Or separate. Let's stick with what we had. Okay. Let me make some adjustments up here as well. Move this up a tad. And as you can see, you can really adjust this any way you like, um, as long as it's suiting your style. Can be a little bit wiggly wormy, so you gotta you gotta make it what you want. Okay, that's getting to something I like. Hmm. I want these lines to match. Tell you what, I could just adjust this one. Why don't I adjust this one? Again, curvature tool. I can just bring this over to match the other one. Nice. You can drag select and select your whole piece you not centered on it you can do that that's probably a last step kind of thing and there we go I think I think I'm happy with this I'd like these to be level though let's bring them up a tad higher put them in line with the other now this isn't perfect but um, this is as best as I can do right now trying to make this tutorial video short but I have done another project prior and this uh, after spending some time tweaking it, making it exactly what I want, this is what I ended up with. So I encourage you guys to do the same. Uh, don't let your first attempt be your only attempt. All right, so let's move now to um, how to export this. So you can uh, post it on Canvas. So first you'll start up here in the upper left. You'll go File, you'll do Export, you'll Export As, and by default it's going to set it to a PNG. You can go ahead and save that to wherever you're working. If you're working on a flash drive, you'll save it there or on a desktop on your computer. Go ahead and click export and then leave these settings the same as I have here. Go ahead and click OK and then it'll export it to your desktop. That's your image, right? But we want to also save the Illustrator file. So for that, you'll do file. You can do save if you have it or save as and that'll set it as Adobe Illustrator. You can change the name. Um, shouldn't say signature, should say initial, but there you go. And then you could set it to, again, your desktop or your flash drive, wherever you're saving it. Then go ahead and click Save. Apparently I already have one named this, so we'll just ignore that. And then, boom, um, you also leave these settings the same and click OK. There you go, and then you've successfully saved your project. So now, once you're on your desktop, you'll want to upload your project here, your image and your file to Canvas, as well as pictures of your scribbles on the side. All right, I hope that helps. Let me know if you guys have any questions or need any further help.